Today, we'll be working on precise landings with the contract Rescue a Kerbal from the surface of the moon. The challenge of this mission is stepped up with our stranded Kerbal being located far from the moon's equator. This will not only affect the way in which we approach the landing, but we will also be looking at the best way to return to Kerbin from a highly inclined orbit. That aside, the main challenge, of course, will be putting our craft down near our target. This runs from how to time the descent, to adjusting course, to finally touching down within easy EVA distance. Let's get started. Now this is a rescue mission, so don't forget to leave a seat for the rescue E. So in this three crewed capsule, I only have two Kerbals. I got Jebediah and Bob, neither of which have been on the surface of the moon. So this will also gain them experience. But other than a couple of things, this is a very similar launch to what we have seen in the past. Just because this vessel is bigger, that doesn't change any of the principles for getting it to orbit. And in case you missed the build video for this, there should be a link coming up there at the top right for you. Just a quick reminder of our two contracts. Contract number one is to rescue Mark E. Kerman, who is stranded on the surface of the moon, and return him safely to Kerbin. And we have a second contract to bring back a vessel to Kerbin from the surface of the moon. And this vessel will be doing exactly that. Well, at least the command capsule will be coming back. Now we are coming to my customary place where I've been reducing thrust for the last few launches, but unfortunately that is the issue with SRBs is I do not have the ability to reduce thrust until I actually lose the SRB. So we're just gonna have to live with where this time to apoapsis ends up, but we're about to lose our SRBs here. There we go, and they're off. And I can reduce thrust on this upper stage if I want, but if you take a look, don't bring this time actually down under a minute. That would be foolish. Do you want to keep the speed that you've already built? But you can see our target apoapsis is already almost at 80 kilometers anyway. So I'm just going to let it get there. And cut. Okay, there we go. And we just got to coast up to our apoapsis and finish off our circularization. Now, we our periapsis, because of our steep ascent and high thrust, still very high, so we're going to need a lot of thrust up there. But now that we're over 60 kilometers, we can lose our fairings and our escape tower just by simply hitting the stage button. There we go. Oh, these didn't come off quite so cleanly, but that's okay. I'm sure we'll lose them momentarily. Now, one thing to keep in mind is with our periapsis much lower than where we've accustomed to it being. This is going to have to be a fairly big circularization burn. So you wanna start your burn uh, a fair bit before you actually get to your apoapsis. Start right now, actually. It's easy to cut it if you find that you're starting to push your apoapsis up. I'm keeping this right down on the horizon. Or if you like, you can use a maneuver node for this. A lot of people do do that. I just like going by the numbers myself. And if you find that this is starting to come down too low, don't forget you can just simply pitch up to stall that time going down. Now the time's going up, I can pitch down a little bit. I want to keep that time from getting down to zero. Let's lock her to prograde now at this point. And reduce your throttle if that time starts going up and cut your throttle if you find it's going up very quickly. That's how the apple wapsis gets away on you. Oh, we lost the stage here. <laughs> Should have anticipated that. There we go. Close enough, 80 by 80. Okay, there we go. We are. Let's uh, open up some things. Let's get ourselves to the moon, which is something we've done a few times in this series, but this is the first time where we have no choice as to our landing site. So the one thing to notice here is that our target is, well, quite a way south of the equator. So I certainly do not want to put myself into an equatorial orbit. This lander, by the way, is the lander I've left here from the previous mission. So in order to deal with this, what I want to do is put myself into an inclined orbit and the inclination of the orbit has to be at least equal to the latitude of our lander and if you notice if you click on him he does give you the latitude he is in 41 degrees 
south. So our inclination needs to be at least 41 degrees. Now at this point, we're going to have to eyeball this through a mid-course correction. So halfway along, we put ourselves here and I can see, well, if I'm going to be inserting here, so I want to actually come to the north so that this part of the orbit is to the south. Now we might need to do some orbits before we actually can perform the landing. That's okay. So a little bit of normal up, and then I'm going to use a little bit of prograde to kind of bring that in a little bit. Play around with what gets you the change as cheaply as you can. You might try radial, but I found that prograde worked for me a little bit better. So I'm just sort of putting our trajectory coming in here on edge. This is looking like it's going to work pretty good right about there. So we got ourselves a 31 meter per second burn. Let's go perform that. Just get that to about 12. That's pretty good. Let's see here. This is coming in. I think this is gonna, which, which is this guy? <laughs> I think this is going to work here for me. Yeah. All right. Let's get out there and set up our capture. Actually, I can also take a look at my inclination at this point. Go to Advanced Orbital Info. My inclination is 64 degrees, so I'm definitely, or it just needed to be above 41. And as I perform our moon arc capture, I want to take this moment to welcome aboard my most recent YouTube member and Patreon patron, Anna Nishimiya and Tim. Thank you very much, folks, for your support. And of course, an ongoing thank you to my most awesome Patreon patrons and YouTube members who continue to support this channel. And if you yourself would like to support what I'm doing on this channel, well, there are links down there below the video. But now it's time for us to start thinking about getting down to the surface. Okay, so I'm going to just set this as a target. And that way I can turn off the other lander so it's not confusing the situation. And you can see here, uh, we're not, we have to wait until the moon rotates so that it is underneath our orbit. But in the meantime, it's not like you're doing nothing. Remember that EVA reports are biome specific. And as the moon rotates, especially with us in this highly inclined orbit, different biomes will be passing underneath us. So as I was time warping towards my target, I was able to pick up EVA reports in five new biomes, canyons, the polar crater, the far side basin, the northeast basin, and the east crater. Each of these are 24 science each, so you definitely want to look out for these. Unfortunately, in my time warping, I can see that my target, it's either going to be, my landing's either going to be at sunset or sunrise on the moon. Either way, it's looking like it's going to be pretty dark. So as you close in here, sort of note how quickly the moon is rotating and how quickly our target is approaching because we're going to need to stop a little bit before. So with each orbit, it moves a certain amount of distance. Right? So I think I'm going to need to go, well, actually, I think I'm thinking I'm going to be going on this one here. So just like before, I'm going to stop about a quarter of an orbit ahead of where my landing site is. So we're going to stop about here, put it onto the retrograde vector, give a little bit of thrust, not much. Get us going kind of in the right direction. And again, watch the terrain. Still want to have a good amount of altitude above your target here. And we're going to probably need to make some corrections right or left before we get to our target. Here he is coming up here. I did select him as a target. And you can sort of see now the retrograde icon coming up on here so you can sort of tell that we are a little bit off just from looking at this this sort of tells you which way you need to burn i need to push the retrograde icon this direction towards the south in fact so i'm going to come a little bit this way you can also look at it from here and see how this is pulling the orbit across a little further that's looking pretty good. Again, make sure you're not reducing your altitude so much that it becomes dangerous while you do that. Back onto that retrograde vector. And definitely at this point, do yourself a quick save. 
These precision landings take practice and every vessel is a little bit different. And the big key is once again killing off that horizontal velocity so that you end up dropping right down on top of your target. He's right in this crater, which is actually great because I believe that is also a biome we haven't been in yet. Or even over. I think I need to concentrate mostly on my landing here. Cut a little bit of throttle. I like to watch it a bit from over here. Watching that arc. You can see I'm going to be hitting more that way. Actually, I've got to push a little this way, I think. It's looking pretty good. It looks very hilly in around him. Do not be afraid. You don't have to land right on top of him. Or the Kerbals can EVA a respectable distance. Starting to kill throttle. I'm pushing a little bit more so that these two are lining up. A little bit more throttle. Watching that retrograde icon. I want it to stay above this. If you start bringing it below, that means you're going to fall short for sure. Because this will start to fall on its own anyway. Keep an eye on your altitude. If you need to, pitch up a little bit so that you don't fall down too quickly. In fact, I think I did kill a little bit too much horizontal velocity, so we're just going to throttle up. A little bit push this back towards here again we got lots of fuel don't forget we're gonna be ditching we're gonna be ditching this stage below us before we can land anyway okay we're now coming quite over top it's like there's double targets there for some reason game's deciding it's being a little bit funny on us okay we're gonna pitch up And you can do this sort of with that target icon. This is using a fair amount of fuel, but don't worry about that. See how that retrograde does fall on its own. So we're going to point straight up, push it back that way. There we go. Because we have a ton of fuel that we're actually going to be throwing away fuel anyway, there's no reason to uh, push this a little more this way. I'm going to keep it kind of pointed straight up and just keep doing little puffs like this. We're going to be throwing away this tank as it is. In fact, I'm even going to point a little bit this way. Kill off too much horizontal velocity. Okay. I think one waypoint is the Kerbal and one waypoint is his craft. Okay, we're about 300 meters above, so we do have to be careful about that. Yeah, this is most certainly not the most efficient landing I have ever done. I killed off my velocity too quickly. But if you find that you want to try and do it more efficiently, well, that's what the quick save was for. Don't want to bomb him with our spent stage. Okay, I think I think I think we're getting close here. Let's uh, we're gonna really just kill this off completely. You can give us a little bit of uppitude. I'm going to stage that. We're now coming down for realsies. Explosions are always... Oh! Come down a little hard there, but that's okay. <laughs> I was distracted by the explosion. But we are here sitting in the dark, but we can go now meet our Kerbal. Who is, oh, that's his debris, Mark E is, well, another scientist, what the heck is that about? Actually, let's, while we got our scientist out here, we can take a surface sample for 120 science in the moon's southwest crater, and then we'll take an EVA report for 32 science. Now, this is a report from the moon's southwest crater, so let's uh, get those EVA reports in. I need to also get an EVA report flying over this crater, and I can do that from the vessel, but Kerbals can fly. Jump it up, EVA report. And that is now space just above the moon's crater. There we go. And actually, while we're at it, 
we'll plant ourselves a flag. Now, planting a flag is experience for the Kerbal, but you don't have to get all your Kerbals to plant flags. Everybody involved with this mission gets the experience by just one flag being planted. So even though Jebediah and Bob aren't coming out of the capsule, they will get this experience as well. And we'll also make sure to collect all of the science that we do have packed on this vessel and stow that all away. All right, and with all our science now stored, it is time for us to get ourselves back to Kerbin. And last time we launched from somewhere that was pretty close to the equator, um, this time we're launching from something with a fairly low latitude. So you might be wondering, well, do you do anything different? The answer is no. There, it is impossible to put yourself into an equatorial orbit from any latitude other than zero. That's why the KSC is so conveniently placed on the equator for us back on Kerbin. And in fact, the inclination of the orbit that you can insert yourself into cannot be lower than your current latitude. And that's what happens when you go due east. So we're gonna do really much the same thing. We're just gonna take off and pitch over and head due east. So throttle up, due east we go. That turns out to be this way. <laughs> gear up those lovely twitch engines going and just as before we pitch towards the horizon as quickly as is safe cut our throttle when our apoapsis reaches 12 kilometers and then circularize up there here we go 12 by 12 however we are in an inclined orbit. So this sets up a new issue. How do you get yourself back to Kerbin from this? Well, we have a ton of fuel, 596 meters per second. We only need about 280 to get back in the, an ideal situation. This is a little less than ideal, but you can still force the issue by just simply adding a maneuver, you know, on the prograde side of the moon's orbit around Kerbin, give that self some prograde, fiddle around with the timing, Again, trying to get that periapsis down to about 35 kilometers works the best. There we go. That's going to work for us just fine. 342 meters per second instead of our customary uh, 280. And that's because of the orbit. There's a definite inefficiency with the fact that we're not just going out in this retrograde direction relative to the moon's orbit. We also have quite a lot of, because we're down here, of northitude. It would have been better... If this maneuver was near where the our orbit crosses the moon's equator, unfortunately right now that's not the situation, but as the moon goes around in its orbit, we will get to a point where this part of this orbit will match with the prograde side of the moon. All we have to do is wait that number of orbits. You can even estimate how much, how, how long you probably have to wait. I'm going to guess that this is maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an orbit along. Let's just call it a quarter just for fun. The moon takes six days to go around in it. So we have to wait a quarter of that. It's actually a little more than that. Let's pop ahead our burn. So it is about two days in the future by simply popping ahead orbits. Let's see where that gets us. There we go. It's about one day, five hours into the future. And now what I'm going to do is simply play around with the timing. Put the timing up. Because I can guarantee you this is all in the wrong spot right now. And we're going to move this, trying to get our periapsis as low as it can go. And notice that I can get my periapsis right into Kerbin out here. Now, if you notice, our apoapsis is out here because we're waiting. This burn isn't going to occur until we're in this vicinity over this way. But now I can start to dramatically reduce the amount of ret or the burn here. I can start bringing some off. We haven't even tweaked this down perfect like yet. There is my 35 kilometer periapsis with Kerbin now for only 288 meters per second rather than what we had before. So, and I can, I'm probably still not on the ideal orbit. I just guesstimated this one day, five hours, but we're already six and a half days into this mission. So what's another, you know, couple of days for these folks. So we're going to ride around again for a little while until we get to this burn. And you can decide yourself whether that is worth it or not, but you may find yourself in a situation where your fuel stores aren't quite as 
robust <laughs> as what we have right now. And while these folks complete their burn, why don't I go over the main takeaways from this episode? The first new idea was dealing with the southern latitude of our landing site, forcing us to insert ourselves into an orbit with an inclination at least as high as the target's latitude. We then looked at how to make a precise landing. This included using the nav ball to line up and keep that retrograde vector between the target icon and the horizon. Realize you are likely to use a little more fuel with this maneuver, and don't forget to give yourself permission to quick save and practice your descent. We then finish off by looking at how to return to Kerbin from an inclined orbit about the moon. Although you can always force the return, it will usually be cheaper to wait until the orbit is in a more favorable orientation with Kerbin. And with that, I'm going to be drawing this episode to a close. I hope you found it useful and that I'll be seeing you again next time. <laughs>